Hello and welcome to A Quiet One. In this episode we're talking to the lovely Sugar Rush, a content creator and streamer for Carnage Clan, who currently has over 7k followers on Twitch. In the episode we talk about the importance of education, working full time and keeping a streaming schedule and how all this can have an impact on our mental health. Let's get into the episode. <laughs> there you go, it's recording now, that's fine. Yeah, no, like I said, I don't want to like treat this too interview-like, so. No, um, that's perfect. I do have like simple like little questions and that I'll ask and then we'll just just chat and just see what happens really. Yeah. Because <laughs> it will be obviously edited down after. And, um, <laughs> In case I say anything wrong, <laughs> cut. <laughs> cut. <laughs> stop, stop. <laughs> um, you could be open as you want, you know, mm-hmm. if, you, 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 if you don't want to answer a question, then like, don't. <laughs> <laughs> Simple You're like, yeah, that. I don't want to answer this one. This is too tough. <laughs> <Next>. <laughs> you, yeah, you said not Matt's questions, please. <laughs> okay, so like, for someone who doesn't like know you on like a personal level, what's like the one thing that I should like going into this conversation know about you? Um, I, I don't know why juggling came to my head straight away. Juggling. Yeah. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> yeah, you should know that I'm great at juggling. You're great that's at like uh, on my Twitch bio. That's what Alyssa says. One of the things is I'm a fantastic juggler, <laughs> and I think when people don't know me and they come across me, I always want to come across as a person that's kind mm-hmm. and that just wants to be down for positive vibes. Because I think once I came into the gaming industry, right, I learned that there's people that have unnecessarily egos. You don't need to have egos when you're networking and when you're playing with uh, one another. It's fine to have your own friend group. So I wanted to stay away from that. I wanted to create a place where people can feel safe and be happy and honest. And we can just be friends. I don't like, I didn't like the aspect of treating everyone as a viewer, especially because we have such small communities. We should be making those ties because those are going to be the people that will be there for you once you are a bigger content creator or you're going in that direction and uh so yeah i think i I love people knowing that i'm always going to be kind i have a rabbit and i can juggle (laughs) juggle and a rabbit yeah it's benji isn't it yeah benji benji was meant to be a boy turned out Ah. to be a girl Ah. (laughs) yeah Uh now i have a girl so it's fine yeah it's okay i still love her i just had to (laughs) shorten down the name benjamin to benji Benji. just to suit her better yeah oh that's cool have you got any do you want to like show us some juggling you got any juggling oh yeah i thought you'd never ask (laughs) i have my juggling balls right next to me because i can (laughs) you you were prepared for this yeah because it's my channel redemption i'm like you want to see some juggling but Um, don't worry i do it for free i do it for free (laughs) i learned this back in university because for one of my campaigns i was saying oh this is how i'll juggle all the responsibilities guys and each ball had something else written on it i'm terrible right now you're you're put on the spot (laughs) let me warm up that was just me warming up just stretch (laughs) there we go yeah yeah, i I can probably do about probably go around about two or three times but then that'd be it i couldn't do any more than that (laughs) they seem to go really high or something yeah you know yesterday on stream i was doing like about for 20 seconds and i was like yeah guys i'm gonna end like finish now it's it's never gonna fall because I was just in the mood. I don't know why I was kept juggling, juggling yesterday. I think I was dead most of the stream. That's why. <laughs> Finding the excuses to entertain people. <laughs> you, you. I, I'd have to, I have to say you're like one of those streamers that I like to have because I try and watch Twitch as like much as possible. But um, I used to watch it quite a lot, but now um, I don't watch it as much. But you're one of those streamers that when I'm playing like Minecraft, I will have you on the other screen, and um, it, it it does really. It feels like. You're kind of just like in the room together, sort of thing. Ah, oh, that's you're cute. Of, you're kind of like just chilling, sort of thing together. It's quite you're very chilled, chilled, oh, um, chilled streamer, which is which is quite nice. Sometimes when I go into streams and they're like overly hyper and like shouting down the mic and stuff, I, I can't. I can't yeah, do it. don't get don't get me wrong. I can be that person. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with it. <laughs> yeah, it happens. You know, when the creeper kills me, damn it, <laughs> yeah. creeper. When, no. when it's just a bit over the top like like yeah i i do sort of i do understand i think there's a few streamers that i also i always have tab 
uh, just because I just like hanging out with them. Hmm. But I think um, some streamers, because you have a streamer personality, what I've realized as well. Some people are not like how they are on stream. But uh, I do agree, some people can be a bit more animated. Hmm. And sometimes it's not your cup of tea, and that's okay. And uh, it might be someone else's cup of tea because they might want someone that's hyperactive and just in there, like just, you know, bouncing around. And you're like, yeah, I want to watch this. It makes me happy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it just really gives you that energy. You know, someone with a load of energy. Yeah. Which is, is quite nice. Yeah. I think there's like a time and place. <laughs> yeah, but, I agree. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But yeah, when I'm sitting there playing Minecraft or something, I can't have someone shouting in my ear. Yeah, you're like, okay, I'm building faster. <laughs> I'm doing it. <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> Oh, amazing. Um, okay, so when it comes to like streaming, like because you stream pretty much, every, it's pretty much every day, isn't it? It's yeah, I stream five days a week. Five days a week. How how do you find it? Because you obviously work as well. Um. So initially, when I started streaming, I made the, I forced a schedule, which was I streamed from seven pm onwards mm. for like two three hours. And on Sundays, I stream from like 2 p.m. onwards till hat whenever I want. And I forced that schedule because I knew I was going to get a grad job. I knew I wanted to work in education. So I wanted to make sure my streaming community is already fit on a schedule that they used to if I'm working full time. So that's what's happened. And now slowly I've moved the streaming a bit back. Like it's uh, I start at 8.30 instead because I need more time. I need to go gym. I need to make dinner. But because the timings have already been adapted, it made it a lot easier for me to be like, oh, I'm working now, guys. Oh, I'll see you in the evening. And nothing changed, really, because yeah. I always, like, I knew from the get-go, I was like, if I want to do streaming alongside my full-time job, I need to make sure streaming will always be an evening thing. And on a, on a Sunday, it can be any time. So that's what I kind of done with. And it's a lot with work as well. I was quite open and honest with them, and they love that I stream. They were like, oh, this is great. This is extracurriculum. You should definitely be doing something outside of work. It shouldn't just be work, work, work. That's not your identity. Yeah. Your identity is work, content creator, wherever you want to be. And I was like, that's true. So uh, because they're very supportive as well, I have a lot more fun doing it. It's just uh, es essentially I wanted to stream because it, it's those you can't get the same experience elsewhere it's the people around you, the people you meet. So you learn so much from them. And when you're gaming, you're not gaming alone. You're gaming with a bunch of people. And that's what makes it stand out. And I just love that aspect that I've met so many different people that I can call my friends. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. Do you think it's important to have that that schedule? Like, especially if like you're new. I mean, yourself, it might be a bit different now. But like, especially starting out streaming, is it important to keep that schedule Yes, I would say so, because I, when I started streaming, don't get me wrong, it was COVID, I was unemployed, uh, I was streaming crazy hours, like 12am to 6am, 6 6 and like, because I was awake, you know, it didn't yeah. really matter, but what I noticed was the people that wanted to watch me, they're not always free, mm. they're really not always free, so I was like, actually, why am I ruining, you know, why I'm not being scheduled to them, because if they know every day I'm live at this time, they can make sure they can come by for an hour. They can come by for 15 minutes or 20 minutes, yeah. you know? So I think after a, a month of streaming, uh, I forced myself to have a schedule and I carried on. And uh, in all honesty, it was fairly easy to get affiliate that way. Then it was, uh, it was fairly easy to, like, for example, when I upload things on TikTok or Twitter, I could just be like, guys, I'm live every day at this time. And then I saw like a bunch of people come in straight away because they knew when I was always live. Mm. And I think that really helps small content creators because at the, at the same time, it's going to help your mental health because you need to treat your hobby or this job that where you're a boss as a schedule as well. Because once you let it out the way, because you're your own critic, right? But when you're your own boss, you're so lenient on yourself. Yeah. And that's what ruins a lot of mental health for people when in content creation world because you're like, oh... I don't feel like streaming at seven. I guess I'll stream at nine. But now you've you're live from nine till two a.m. Now you're sleeping late. That's not yeah. good. Then you're gonna wake up late and you're gonna feel garbage and you're gonna repeat the circle again and again. And I think if you just force yourself saying like, nope, every day at seven p.m. I'm gonna stream. So I need to get up early. I need to go to gym. I need to do all my chores during the day. I need to eat food. Then I can stream. And then you can be like, okay, shit, it's getting eleven. I need to get off now. Yeah. And that way you can stay healthy. But 
it's really hard to be your own boss when you can be so lenient on yourself, but then you can be so hard on yourself when things aren't going right. Yeah, no, hundred percent agree. Hundred mm. percent. I mean, I, I, it was. It's, well, it's been a few months now. I don't play anything during the week now because obviously I work full time as well. So, and I remember I'll be get, I'll get home, I'll jump on online like eight, nine o'clock, and then I'll be up till. 12 11 o'clock playing and then i've got mm-hmm. to be up at half six in the morning for work and i just wasn't getting enough sleep so i told myself like i can't play during the week now i need to i need to go to bed early so i'm in i'm normally in bed by eight nine o'clock every evening mm-hmm. um, and then up at half six so and i can say that it's that just doing that helps so much just it does. just getting that right amount of sleep um and not going to bed stressed because <laughs> that's what i found as well you'll you'll be playing i'll be playing i played apex quite a bit mm-hmm. um, that like warzone it, it can be stressful at times and then if you're going to bed as well stressed you're just not you're not getting the right right sleep you know, you yeah need you're to, not the, the to um function the next day um and no, I, I agree feel, with what you're I saying. Just, I just feel old as well. <laughs> <laughs> just like, I need sleep. I need to sleep. <laughs> but how how are you like generally like in in like life like health wise? Because you go to the gym quite a bit now, don't you? Yeah, I see, I've. You post quite a bit on um, Instagram. Yeah, the thing is, I always went to gym, but there was you know uh, when you go to gym, you have these periods where you go to gym. And then you don't, don't go to gym because you've hit a low in your life. And then you go to gym because you're like, yeah, I want to get, you know, I want to help my mental health. And I think I started taking it. I became very strict on myself after like November time. Mm. And I was just like, no, 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 no excuses. Going to go to gym when it's gym day. I'm going to feel bad if I don't go to gym. And I think since I started taking it more seriously, I was like, you know what? What's the harm in posting on Twitter, uh, Instagram whenever I go to gym? Because in a sense, I can motivate people. And uh, it it feels really nice when like a lot of my friends message me saying, "Oh my god, yeah, you're going to gym. I'm going to gym too. Yeah. Okay, I'll go." And it's nice that you can motivate people around you because they look at my stories like, "Damn, she's gone like basically every day. Why can't I go?" And then I just lo- I just love gymming. I know because uh, I have like severe anxiety, and uh, um, just for my mental health, like from the start, we're like whenever I've taken therapy, they've always recommended that gym is that one outlet that I have. Like gym has always helped me. When I go gym, I'm at, like in the best mental of my life. And they were like, it's just like gym is your yoga. You don't like doing yoga. You don't like doing meditation. You should go, You should continue gym because that's what's going to help you. And I've always noticed whenever I let go of gym at any aspect of my life, I know I start going down like the spiral of, oh, I don't feel good. I don't feel yeah. good about myself. I don't like what I'm doing. And I think it's very important for, like, everyone should find out what works for them. For me, I know gym works for me and it has, like, I'm quite happy. And uh, it's a way that I can keep myself healthy. It can be an outlet for, like, if my work is stressful or, like, uh, streaming has been a bit poopy. I'm like, oh, yeah, I can go to gym, you know, just take out the emotions. And I come back and I feel great. I think that's what um, that was really important for me to find out what's healthy for me and what's going to keep me healthy. And to be honest, I didn't find that alone. It's not easy to find alone. Like, come on, I took help from professional people to be like, help me. What's wrong? This is what's happening. And it didn't take it wasn't like one session and they were like, this is what it is. Mm. It was like after going to therapy for like over like a year. And then they were like, "Okay, this is what we think is working, yada, yada. And it's something I still take. I still go to therapy because I just find it so useful because sometimes I don't understand myself because I'm like, why am I reacting this way? And they'll help me understand and break it down. And I'm like, whoa, okay. It's so good because I think I've become more self-aware and I love that because when I'm self-aware, then I help other people understand like what you're reacting like this because this, do you think this could change? And then maybe you could react a different way. No, at least, you know, and I think it's, uh, I always recommend people as well. I'm like, don't take therapy as like a weakness. It's not. No. It's actually a, a very empowering move yeah. uh, because that you want to make sure that you're in the best position ever. Not everyone does that, but you can do that. Yeah, it's yeah. I think it's it is yeah. It's acknowledging that, you know, reaching out, talking about it, is not a weak is not seen as a weakness. And I think yeah. in, you know it is. I think in society, unfortunately, it it has been portrayed as a weakness. Um, 
but yeah, no, no, hundred percent, hundred percent agree with that. Has there any? Has there ever been like a thing that's sort of happened that has shaped the way your life has like sort of turned out? Like with this, with this, with streaming, like gaming, has that been like something that you've done your whole life? Um, has it? Has has yeah? Has there a certain thing shaped the way your life has turned out? Like how so, your life is today? No, I no, I understand. I was just like, oh, wait, am I overthinking I'm, this I'm question? Confu- <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm overthinking the question myself. So I'm confusing myself while asking the, the question. I was getting confused because <laughs> I was like, wait, did I not get it? <laughs> no, so I, I've I've always loved gaming. I think because mm. I have um, so I was always um a daddy's girl. So my dad was in the army. I always wanted to be like him. So um, my dad used to like, be like, you know, you can't go to war. Because I was like, dad, I want to be in the army. It's just like you. And it's like, no, you can't. Because he always wanted me to uh, aspire into a career that could be in the medical field. Wow. I'm not in the medical field. <laughs> <laughs> so oops, dad. And um, I think uh, that's the way I got into gaming. Because I used to go to my dad's office so much. And in the office, what am I going to do? not go and look at his army office or whatever i used to just sit down on his pc and game and uh that's where i got into gaming but my mom is a tiger mom so do you know what the term tiger mom means i don't know someone that's just on your butt constantly about education like you need to educate yourself you need to know you need to be studying you need to be doing this no you you watching cartoon now that's frying your brain you need to be studying so that's the kind of mom i had well I have and she wasn't really happy with gaming so she'd always take away the any consoles or any pc games we'd have constantly so it was always like a battle of like hiding and gaming like if I go to my friend's house yes can we game can we do this and I think uh, going forward I wasn't a I I wouldn't say I was a huge gamer I was more of an outdoorsy person because Mm. I was such an introvert I wouldn't talk to people I honestly I wouldn't even talk to the opposite gender because I was that shy I'd be like oh my god boy Mm. Damn. Yeah, no, and I was, even I was, I was exactly the same girl. Yeah, up. and even with any ladies as well, but oh my god, it's a girl. Oh no, I have to make friends. <laughs> oh no, yeah. So I was like always hyperventilating. And whereas my mom and dad didn't understand how I was so shy, because my dad's a very outgoing person, and equally my mom, she's an artist. She is absolutely amazing at talking to people at that point. And uh, so going forward, I think uh, my mom and dad had a lot of problems with their relationship. They got divorced sort of like it kind of like I don't know why at that point and I still don't understand it that kind of put the blame on me as a child so I was just like very I was like I just got closed off I was like oh my god I can't believe the two people I love in my life I've broken them up because in my head I was like how can I break like in my head I still remember I was like how can I break a girlfriend and boyfriend up I don't understand like what's happening and I think I was too young at that point and then I went to in, in school as well, I think because we moved a, t- a lot of times, I lived with my dad different places, like we've lived in different countries. And then finally, we decided to completely come back to the UK and reside here. And when I went to school, there was a lot of bullying. Like I always felt so isolated because like, I don't understand, I still don't understand why kids bully each other. I still want, like I get very annoyed. I I've, like, I hate it when people bully each other, like even, especially online as well. I just get, it's just, I personally get a bit annoyed because I'm like, you don't understand how this impacts someone because I know how it felt uh, coming from that point. And then I think going forward, uh, when I went to university, it's sort of like when I bought my own console yeah. and that's how I really got into gaming. Cause I was just like, when I'm at home, my, my home life isn't great. So maybe I should just like get a console and game instead of when I'm at home. Because I was, when I was at university, I wasn't coming home until like, I lived at home by the way, I only live about, 30 minutes away from uni it didn't make sense to live on campus I wanted to save the money in case I needed to move to London for my job or anything and uh, you know so I got myself a console and I started gaming uh, with my friends online it kind of helped me escape reality a bit and just you know be in a better place for a few hours and uh, that's how I initially started gaming and why I started streaming was for the same reason I felt like I wasn't talking to anyone I was very isolated Uh, especially with COVID because when I went to university, I opened up as a person, like my personality just switched. Like I was a people's person. I loved presenting. I loved uh, advocating. And I was in a lot of like political stuff. And I was just like, actually, I should carry on streaming to build my people skill. 
that's why I started streaming because I was like, if I'm talking to someone in chat, I can be aware of how I'm talking and I can continue building on those skills. And then I didn't realize streaming was going to actually turn into something. Mm. And then it did. And I was like, oh, wow, I really like it. I enjoy it because I loved gaming. And I always wanted to find like a side hobby to do when I started working. But honestly, gaming as a side hobby is just amazing with the connections you make. Yeah, like yeah, uh, you meet some angels in your life and you're like wow <laughs> i didn't know you exist now i do <laughs> yeah no i've I've met some like great people just during gaming there's mm-hmm. <clears throat> playing uh, there's some people i think that like live up in birmingham that i would game with like every single day it felt like i i knew them but i'd never mm-hmm. physically met them in person which is weird you know we know we knew obviously knew what we like looked like and everything but like not meeting someone actually physically in person but you feel like you're like best friends it's it's weird like that sort of thing can actually now happen with Mm -hmm. just gaming i know and i think one one of the key things that opened up to me is a lot of people have problems and their problems could be just as heavy as yours or heavier or lighter but the fact is you're not alone and I think that aspect really helped me as well, having friends that are super open, especially that I've met online, and I'm able to tell, like, open up to them, because, you know, in your life, you don't want to constantly go to the same person again and again, and be like, oh, this happened again, this was happening, and I think my friends have made such, like, a pool of people that I know if I don't want to talk to A person, talk to B, I can go to B and just tell them how it is, and they'll understand because they've been through something similar, and I think it was really nice for me to feel like I'm not alone because sometimes yeah. it does you know when you have your own problems like oh my god this is this is the worst thing that could happen to me like god hates me yada yada da, da, da. and then it's nice to be around people like, like actually they've been through something similar maybe let me ask them what they think or what I should do yeah. or maybe let me vent to them even if yeah. they can't do something they can understand yeah yeah because yeah. you, you you sort of feel you feel guilty in a way, mm. like trying to push, not not push your problems onto someone else, but exactly. even just talking about your problems to someone else, you sort of you sort of feel as if you're pushing your problem onto them. Yeah. Um, but when in fact you're not, you you know there are people there that you can uh, talk to. You know whether that is family, friends, professionals. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, no, that's yeah. Um. <laughs> Going on to a bit of a different question. Has there ever been like a moment in your life so far that you literally had like no idea what was going on? Um, I think it was probably um, after university where I was like really confused because I think I always just assumed that I would get a grad job straight away. And, you know, mm. I'd get a grad job, I'd move away from home and that didn't happen. COVID hit and everyone was like, oh my goodness, we're not hiring people yeah we're hiring people but it's less people and I think at that point I was so confused because I was like oh my god I've lost direction in my life because you know school college university that was my route and then it was like job happy and then I was like oh no I haven't got a job what's happening like what is this and then I had to like sort of like take a step back and really reevaluate how I could like um still be a good person uh, essentially and not be that person that's being hard on me mm-hmm. and I think that's why I started streaming and I started taking gym more seriously even though I was doing home workouts I was working out with my brothers so it was really nice to just be able to connect with them and then I was gaming I started streaming and through that time I was able to apply for jobs as well even though it took I think I got a job finally after a year and a half mm-hmm. so it was a very long time and at that point I'm grateful that I made savings as well like by staying away from uni so I was able to not just like constantly rely on my mom and just be like hey mom can you get this I was able to help her out as well because uh, she had lost her job at that point as well and I was just like don't worry about it we got this you know Uh, so I think at that point I was probably lost the most when I came out of university because I think everyone just thinks education is a direct route to a job it's really not it can Mm. it can come to a point where you're like the most educated most knowledgeable person but life could be like "Mm, nah don't need you right now you know we're gonna take a bit of time until you find a great job and you know what it did take a bit of time but I'm really happy with my job like uh and I just love the balance that I have in my life touch wood I hope it carries on (laughs) going this way because I want to start like making time for TikTok again and all of this and I think I'm in a good place 
But when you lose direction, it's really important to just take a step back and say, say what can I do differently? And it, it, it's not a straight answer. Don't get me wrong. I didn't figure this out within a week. It took me a good, like, I'd say six months of beating myself up of my mental health. And I was in a really bad point at that point. And then for me to come out and be like, okay, you know what? I'll work out a bit. I'll do this. And it was a slow process. It wasn't like, oh, yes, I know what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be doing streaming and this. No, it was like I started working out. I got in a bit of a better mental health space after like a month or something. And I was like, actually, let's try streaming. Then I started streaming. Yada. It takes a while. Mm, yeah, definitely. Absolutely. Yeah. It's not. Yeah, it's not something that just happens overnight sort of thing. Yeah, um, it definitely it doesn't. Doesn't, it doesn't. It doesn't fix itself overnight. How, how long have you been streaming now? How long? Uh, I've been streaming just over two years now. Two years. So, um, because you're on how many follow? You're on about seven, almost eight k followers. Yes, I get follow by it all the time. So at the oh, moment, yeah. hopefully seven k. Seven k. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Imagine they're removing it. Like, no, you're only on like three k. I'm like, what? <laughs> 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 Wait a minute. <laughs> Hang on a minute. <laughs> yeah there's a lot of that follow bot things happening because i try i tried the, the whole streaming thing for a bit and i i i realized like i'm not when i when i game mm-hmm. i'm i'm quiet <laughs> i can't do the whole talking and gaming thing at the same time otherwise i just i'm just utter trash so <laughs> but no. i i noticed the whole the whole follower follow bots like you're you're suddenly talking to no one and then suddenly like a hundred people come into your lobby yeah like wow like, i'm famous oh, so oh many people oh yeah, you're like, you're like <laughs> thank you guys for liking my stream oh wait they're bots okay yeah, great they've um, all got the same name it's like hang on a minute <laughs> yeah I, honestly i don't know why at the moment i get a follow bot every day which is annoying because i can't raid someone then oh. because if i raid them the follow bot will follow through and follow bot them oh yeah and it's a bit annoying because then i'm always like oh all right, guys, then I'll just put people's link in my chat and be like, okay, guys, I would have raided this person. Go check it out. But, you know, not everyone goes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And you're like, you can only do so much because it's a bit annoying. I don't know who it is, but I feel like I'm on a subscription-based follow bot because every day I get follow bot at the same time. I'm like, dude, if you want to spend money on me, donation link is in the bio. <laughs> Go on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, where... Because you obviously work full time as well. What do you do, if you don't mind me asking? So I'm a senior consultant in one of the top top four firms, and I specialize in education because that's what I always loved. Um, I think it was like the thing that got me out of like my introverted self, and mm. I was just like, no, I'm really passionate about education. No, I need to make change. Yeah. And then when I was at university, we have a uh, you know about sabbatical officer roles, right? At university, yeah, where you yeah, could yeah. set. So I was a vice president of education. I did that for a year. And then I, I ran for president. Then I did a president for a year. And then I worked with NUS, which is the uh, national... What is, the hell, what is NUS? <laughs> NUS <laughs> meaning uh, the National Union of Students. That's what it was. I was like, NU, what were you? What was you? <laughs> so um, then I made like a lot of networks. I think I understood from a, a perspective of how important education is and how much university works solely with the government to ensure, you know, there's accessibility, there's value for money. And now co- students are, well, customers because they're essentially paying 9K fees. How are we maintaining that? And I was so fascinated by this whole world that opened up to me. I was like, wow, this is where I want to work. This is where I want to make a difference. Because I know if I'm working in the education sector, I might be making a difference to a school student, a college student, Mm. or a uni student. And that could help them potentially get a job that they want or the education that they need. And so I just love, like, honestly, I'm so passionate about education. When someone asks me, I just get, like, really teary. And I'm like, (laughs) guys, it's so good. So when I see people tweet online, like, education isn't good i'm like no it wasn't good for you doesn't mean it's not good for someone else because yeah. there's different routes now there's like a degree apprenticeship so you can work and uh, study at the same time because people are like, oh, i don't want to study i'm like okay work and study there's accelerated degrees meaning you don't have to study for four years or three years anymore you can study for two years graduate and get out yeah. there's so many different options now and even my brother he's not very interested in university i'll be honest because me i i was very interested in university my brother was very interested. My younger brother, he's interested. And my youngest, he's not interested. So I was just like, hey, let's look at options of, for example, degree apprenticeships. And he loves degree apprenticeships because he's going to be working full time. 
and he's going to be uh, studying at the same time. So he's going to be what? Well, I think when you're on a degree apprenticeship, it depends what kind of wage you have. But we're, like you start from anywhere from like 25K to 35K. And that is a great job for a degree apprenticeship whilst you're getting a degree. And you're young. You're what, 18? Yeah. You're on a good wage. Yeah. You're studying. That's amazing. And then That's after, true. if you don't want to carry on with it, it's cool. You've got what, a three-year experience in a in a company that you don't want to work in, cool, you can go somewhere else or you can take a break and do whatever you want. Yeah. I think people are so easy to shut down the education route. And it's like, no, it's a traditional route, but it doesn't streaming doesn't work out for everyone. So please don't cut the hopes and dreams yeah. of everyone by saying, no, I did it without education. No, it's great you did. You're an entrepreneur. But don't start selling the stream if you're not teaching people how to be in the same position as you. Yeah. If you're going to take the responsibility and be like, this is what I did. This is how to do YouTube. This is what to do. If you're not going to teach it, please stop like mis-selling education. Mm-hmm. It's not fair at yeah, all. No, 100%. I, I, I look back now at like school, college. Um, I dropped out of um, uni, unfortunately. But I look back now and I actually regret doing that. And I mm-hmm. regret not trying I, I mean i was a, i was a good student but i know i now that i could have done a lot better i could have worked a lot harder um so if anyone ever asks me i'm always say yeah no stay in education as long as possible you know it's it's such a small part of your life mm-hmm. just you know like year wise just just work your ass off like as long as possible for, for that amount of those amount of years and it, it will at some point pay off in the future for you no i completely yeah, agree with you i think just having education <clears throat> underneath your belt because mm. it's not just education it's a whole experience at university um because i'll be honest i was that student that would just go to university and study i did that for two years regretted it my whole life I, like looking back at it now i'm just like why did i not engage with the university faster because after my two years when i ran for vice president education i was like what the hell was i doing just studying and not doing anything because it's not just about studying it's about how you're going to stand out as a person once you graduate what are you doing to make yourself look good and that's when i started like overtaking part in everything i became cheerleading marketing i took part in different sports club i was um I was uh, the strategic director for TEDx. I was like, honestly, my, if you look at it after like my three years, you're like, damn, what happened? What did (laughs) you start doing? Because I just realized how I was wasting my time at university. You have so many new opportunities and network. It's about how you want to go and engage with that. You can, any student can do it and anyone can do it, but people are so reluctant to do it. They're like, no, I'm just going to study. Oh yeah. University was such a waste of time. I didn't do this. I honestly didn't get my job because of my degree. I got my job because of my networks I made because the right people knew me. And when I was looking for a job, yeah, it took me a year and a half, but that's when after my mental health was a lot better, I reached out to them saying, hey, I'm still looking for a job. This is what I'm interested in. Do you think you can recommend me somewhere? And I started getting recommendations and that's how I got more and more jobs. So I was just like, oh, cool. And they were like, oh yeah, this person knows you. You're a great person. Can we get to know you? Can we interview you? And that's how I honestly got my job. I didn't get my job through just applying basic ways. You can do that. You can do that. But it's about the networks and the people you make because they can recommend you for jobs. And once they recommend you, like, for example, I'm in the top four firm. So let's just say after two years, you're like, hey, sugar, uh, I'm looking for a job in the top four as well. I'd love to apply to the marketing. I'd be like, hey, I know you. Let me recommend you. Because I've been at the firm for a while, I can be like, oh, yeah, this is my friend, blah, 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 recommend him. Boom. Now you're recommended and they're more likely to look at your, uh, you know, your CV, your your uh, application, everything. And that's how it works. It's about what kind of people, you know, it's about who you know. Yeah. yeah. That's what it really comes down to. And university. And there's so many other places. I feel like in esports, it's a lot harder to network personally because I love networking with people because I feel like over here, everyone's so cautious about, and I do understand it because you don't know who's an honest person here. IRL, you can really tell who's an honest person and who wants like something positive. Over here, you see a lot of clout chasers. Yeah. And they're like, yeah. oh, I don't know, I'm friends with this person, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I'm going to stream with it. It's like, no, that's why people feel used and they close off. That's why it's really hard to network in these spaces. And I understand you want to protect what you've worked really hard on. And I completely get that. But I think people... Because of how the community is, people have like have been started being gatekept from like networking. 
Not yeah. everyone wants to know you unless you're on the same page as them. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, there's some genuine people that are huge streamers and they still have that space in their heart where they can trust other people and it's nice. And you're always like, oh, I hope they don't know, you know, nothing happens to them where they have a terrible experience. I wouldn't want this for them, blah, blah. And yeah, it's really hard. I think esports is just a very different cup of tea because I'm also a project manager for Carnage Clan. Mm. And I realized how working at my workplace is different. Carnage Clan is totally different. It's I didn't realize the, you know, I don't, I don't know what the correct word is, but it's the management is very different compared to my workplace. In my workplace, you set up meetings, you're like, next week we're going to do this, this, this is happening. Whereas in the esports team it's like we want to do this can we do this next week no 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 my i'm busy this is what's happening the other and you're like how i don't know how to manage this it's such a it's such an opposite sort of work and it's like wow it, this this i feel like my work at like carnage clan is a lot harder than my work at my workplace because my workplace is so structured it's so organized it's more whereas in esports it, yeah. it's esports it's not structured it's a bit like oh this has come up. We need to focus on this now. This is, it's so like random and unpredictable. Mm. Mm. And you can never, uh, yeah, I, I always find that really difficult. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, no, well, no, I could, I could imagine. Should, you know, if, if you're, it's like depends on like how you work as well. So if you're with your full time job, if this is how you work, this is how you do things. If then you go on to try and do, that job somewhere else yeah and they're kind of not there's no structure there <laughs> yeah and the way you your you work it's going to be pretty difficult i assume um so well so so you initially do three three jobs then really don't you you've got your full-time job you've got the project manager at carnage and then you've got your your streaming as well how do you how how, how do you do that <laughs> like for me that sounds like well that is a, that's a lot that's like that's three different jobs it's like how, how do you juggle that and then just sort of you're just you, your everyday life when you're not streaming when you just want to go out and go shopping See, or something like that I, I think that's why i take days off so I, monday and saturdays are my days off so I, uh monday after work if i'm in the city center i'll go shopping i'll go do whatever i want mm. on saturday is my day off where i usually make plans with friends because the thing is there's not and the thing is i'll cancel stream if i've made a plan on like let's just say tuesday and i'm supposed to stream i'll just put a message in discord be like hey guys i'm planning to go with my friends out in london i'll see you guys tomorrow and i think because i've created that sort of relationship with my community like they're really understanding i think every community is really understanding of their streamer if they need to if they just want to enjoy life yeah. and they're like yeah cool like literally in feb i've booked myself a, like a solo holiday for a week in spain and i was just like guys i'll do some irl content streaming but i'm gonna go on holiday enjoy myself for a week and they were like yeah that sounds great you should do that and i think it's about how you know what you want to do because i always, like i love working that's a uh, that's the thing with carnage clan the reason i love working there is and why i wanted to be part of carnage was because i want to take carnage to the next level with management i want to help them succeed and because it's uh it comes from a place you know it comes from my heart i feel like it's not a chore to do yeah. it's something that i love doing it's the same with my work i always say to people work in a place where you feel happy waking up and you're like wow I've got work it's amazing because that's how I feel every day about my full-time job I'm like oh my god I'm so excited <laughs> this is what we're gonna do because it's a place where I'm making a difference and it's the same with the stream whenever I'm streaming I'm not like oh my god I've got a stream today I'm like oh my god I can't wait to stream it's gonna be so exciting can't wait to meet people and I think once you have this positive outlook on the things you're working on and you're doing you'll find time I find time for gym what uh, I go gym like five times a week I find time for it. Uh, well, I like when I want to, like, you know, I also will find time for myself. If I know, so for example, I need to get my roots done, I need to get go get my blonde hair done, I'm going to book my appointment. But if that's during the week, let's just say it's on a Monday, it's on a Tuesday, and I stream on a Tuesday, I'll just tell stream saying, hey guys, do my hair today, I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> Yeah, you know, if a plan comes up, it comes up. But the thing is, if I didn't stream and if I had all the evenings off, I don't see myself going out every evening and doing something because after work, 
but I'd want to go gym, then I'd come home, I'd relax, I'd probably like watch something. And yes, occasionally on every other week, I'd have a plan with my friends. But I don't I think it doesn't change. I'm just trying to take advantage of the free time I have right now. Because as I promote at my actual workplace, I'll have less and less time. So I'm trying to take as much advantage as I can at the moment to get myself to a place that if I don't know, I can only stream once a week, I know uh everyone uh like you want to come to a place where you, you you feel like even if you stream once a week your community will be there yeah. and that's what i'm trying to do put as much time and effort as i can at the moment that if it does come to that later on if i'm more busier and maybe for like two three months i can't stream that much everyone still will still be there yeah yeah 100 going <laughs> going going back to like the gaming and the esport industry what is it like for yourself um being a female gamer what is that like for you because i know like especially recent i mean it's it's always been there but recently there is a lot of um a lot of well, hate towards female female gamers within the industry yeah what's so that like for you i think i experienced a lot of hate on essentially when i started doing tiktok that's where i'd see a mm. lot more of the hate i think on my stream i hardly see it because my mods are so fast yeah. <laughs> i don't even see the message i'm like deleted i'm like oh okay cool yeah. ban <laughs> oh okay cool <laughs> I don't know what happened <laughs> but uh, i think i se- women essentially do face a lot more hate it's just because a lot of the times people have these stereotypes and they already have these ideas of, oh my God, it's a girl gamer. Let me go say this. Let me go say it. Go back to the kitchen. Oh my God, this is so funny. I told a woman to go back to the kitchen. I'm like, mate, that's not hilarious, but okay. I, I think I hardly get offended by what people say because the less I show that I'm offended, the more it bothers them. Yeah. <laughs> and they're just like, why is this not annoying this person? And I, even with my TikTok comments, like looking back at it, whenever someone used to be rude, I used to be like, oh, hey, I hope you have a nice day thanks yeah. and they were like why are you nice to me what yeah, yeah. and then Confused. always like they, yeah they always yeah. like reply like huh and then some people obviously they're horrible people they're just right yeah i hope you don't have a nice day but you're just they're like i don't really care but even like to protect myself for example i stopped talking about like sort of uh my background essentially like you, you know where where i'm ethnic uh, like where i'm based like where my background is from because i realized if i cut that out of um streaming people don't people don't have much to say because mm. they don't know who i essentially am they just yeah. know i'm sugar and they're just like oh, what can we say about that oh yeah you can be salt <laughs> but nothing all they do is just come and say a few things about being a female i think with the esports industry when you're talking to like companies and stuff my experience hasn't been bad it's been more bad on the basis of like they don't treat content creators right as a whole but tiktok has been like terrible and it's still a place that i want to carry on growing in and stuff it doesn't really bother me at the moment how people are and i think um i don't know i don't think i don't see this hate stopping because i feel like they just think it's funny yeah and because they think it's funny and that's their one way of putting women down that's always going to be there as sad as it sounds um unless the top streamers like who are male that start standing up for saying like look this is horrible don't want you saying this stuff and and they hold like their community accountable maybe that can like filter down to other people that can learn but at the moment like for example let's just pick i show speed right i remember there was a clip of one of a female streamer and then he commented on there saying like face kitchen and then everyone found it hilarious and now they all copy it everywhere on her tiktoks that's not fair no. like do you get what i mean i understand i show speed is a young adult but he should also instill in himself that he has a huge audience that's constantly looking at him. And it's not funny. No. <laughs> it's really not funny. No. You're, he's going to potentially maybe have a girlfriend later. Uh, he, he, has, he has a mom. You know, he might have a sister. We don't know. Would you want people to treat people like your own family like that? No, you probably wouldn't want people that's, to treat them like no, that. It's that's, like, that's where's a, your responsibility? Yeah, yeah. that's exactly how I, I look at it. I, I obviously, I grew up with three sisters and my mum. So like i wouldn't say that i wouldn't say that to them so why am i going to go online and say it to a female there it's, it, just yeah, doesn't, exactly. it just it just doesn't make sense at all uh, yeah it's... like if you want to like 
I don't know, maybe like she she said she made a great game play and you're like, no, you didn't. Okay, leave it at that. That's like fine because you're not hating on them. You're just disagreeing with their opinion. Mm. That's different. But once you start adding like sentences like, no, you didn't. Go back to the kitchen. It's like, was the go back to the kitchen necessary? Because now I'm not even looking at your opinion anymore. I'm looking at the fact that you're being a horrible person. Yeah. Mm. It's just, you know, I, and I don't know. Yeah. It's mo- mostly the younger people and then it's like a people that i've seen part of like bigger communities where this isn't frowned upon they just find it funny and they make commands like i remember i came across this account that made a command for someone's tweet long like she was talking about her experience with a certain community and that person made it a command with like he i think he called it like something he said like b-i-t-c-h and that was a command and that tweet long would come up anytime someone would put it on like, do you get what I mean? He's, yeah. he's okay with it. So his yeah. community's like, oh my God, it'd be so funny if we stream yeah. and do that. Yeah, yeah. we can yeah, do that yeah. and get away if with it. If he's okay, then we're, it's okay for us to do it. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. I think it's, it is people who do have like a large audience or like that platform to um, to do good. They should, but obviously some do use it in the wrong way. Mm. And that can then obviously the younger people that follow them think well you know if, they, if they're doing it it's okay you know i can do it I mean, mm-hmm. yeah no 100 percent um when that when you see that sort of thing what does that what what kind of keeps you motivated to to keep doing what you're doing i i think i think hopefully as i said like at the start i just want to be that person that is like for example when i look at other streamers i love valkyrie by the way she is awesome she's humble and then also other streamers like uh i don't know if you know natasha she's an australian streamer and there's uh, there's like so many other people like you you go to the streams and you just feel like the kindness in their heart and you're just like you know what this is what motivates me to stay kind and stay good to the world and this is how i want to be like and I think that's what it comes down to. Essentially, at the moment, I, like, I always look back at it and I'm like, oh, maybe it's because I'm a small streamer. I can't, like, you know, have an, a, a, an opinion that can make an impact. And I think that's what keeps me motivated is hopefully I can get to a place where I can openly, not, not saying I don't openly talk about it at the moment, but openly talk and have action. Yeah. Because maybe more people would be like, yeah, actually, Sugar's right. We should be doing this. Mm-hmm and take like take more responsibility i think because i'm a small streamer at the moment i'd love to be able to get to a place where i can make a difference and i think that's what keeps me motivated and that's what keeps essentially it's the same what keeps me motivated at work education i want to make a difference what keeps me motivated at carnage i want to make a difference i want to help it get to a place where it's like it's you know it's in a healthy growing space where, where we can offer more opportunities to our members and the same with streaming. I hope I get to a place where I can hopefully have a platform for the right things and the right actions that we should be taking to make the community a better place. Yeah. I'm not saying don't have fun. Yes, there should be banter everywhere you go. But there's a fine line between having banter and then being a horrible like person. Yeah, that's, I don't want to say more terms. Yeah. I was like, oh, wait, wait, how can I filter down? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 it's true. It's yeah. There's, yeah, you've got to have that. You've got to have that balance of just, you know, just having fun, having that banter, but then not saying stuff or doing things that are out there to or or, or purposely to harm someone or upset mm-hmm. someone. Yeah, no, hundred percent. What advice advice would you give to younger, well, younger female gamers that are thinking about streaming? Or have just started streaming i would honestly t- if i'm looking from a business point of view i would say to them have a schedule s- ha- make your own brand stay uh understand that not everyone wants to be your friend and that's okay but start you have to be independent try being independent and then once you slowly slowly start growing your friends will come to you and like your friends will start growing from that circle And as a female point of view, one thing I'll say is, honestly, there's going to be a lot of people that are going to say unnecessarily stuff online. And that's okay. Just don't take it to heart because you know that's not you. You you can sleep peacefully 
knowing that it you know it, it's not going to bother you honestly there's people that say such crazy things online just just see it as like oh okay i'm just gonna log off it's fine whatever I'm not gonna pay attention to it but also understand that as a female streamer i know there's quite less of us so essentially female streamers you do represent other females I think that's what the the responsibility comes as a female streamer is that if you muck up and you muck up really bad, it's going to make other female streamers look bad as well. And that's what it, it, it really sucks. But that's what it is, because everyone's going to be like, oh, OK, that's how this is how, you know, this is probably how all female streamers are. This is what they want. This is what they want to do. Because I remember when I was streaming, someone used to come to my chat and be like, yeah, all girls just want this. That's why that's why you dress like this and this way. And it's like no no you don't just ignore that just carry on with everything that you want to do and just be true to yourself be true to your brand and honestly fingers crossed you will see the growth and it, it is a lot of hard work but don't give up yeah it is a lot of hard work everyone says it's so so much easier for female streamers and i'm like really <laughs> really <laughs> i don't know maybe it is maybe i feel like it's easy for like a few bunch of people that can make it through it's it's same about being lucky isn't it mm. there's a few bunch of people that will be lucky and they've go through the cracks and everything but then the other people that have to work hard to break those barriers to get there mm. and um i think a lot of the things are based on just luck essentially because if that was the case that all fem it's easier for females i don't see every single female being the top streamer no no so it's, yeah i mean if yeah uh, when it comes to streaming if, I, if i'm sitting i'll sit there and watch a watch someone stream for 30, 30 minutes to an hour and you know if i don't if i don't vibe with them i'm i'm not going to watch but if i do mm -hmm. then yeah i'm gonna i'll drop them a follow so don't go into yeah, a stream exactly. and then drop them a follow straight away just because they're female it's like well if i don't like, exactly <laughs> if i don't vibe with you then i'm not <laughs> i'm not going to sit there and watch i'm not going to give you my time sort of thing so yeah i like try i try giving a lot of like other females uh streamers support because mm at the end of the day i feel like girls support girls should be essentially a big thing mm. but again as i said at the start a lot of people you when you've suffered through people using you and you don't know who's true to yourself that you quite quickly lose the sentimental value of girls support girls and you're like mm, i don't know because then you don't know who's honest, but you got so you have to put in the hard work to get to a place where people can trust you and you can be friends and networks. That's what the, what this is what this community is about. No, like if just because you're a girl, it doesn't mean essentially if you message me, I'll be like, oh yeah, I'll retweet your stuff. No, 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 get to know me. Who are you? Let's like you know get to that place where you're like, hey, I want a game with you. Let's like maybe have a games and I, I send, again, you have to understand that big streamers would want to do that as well because I have. Like, for example, Natasha's my friend. She is an amazing streamer. She's a pretty big streamer. She averages, like, from 1,500 to 2,000 viewers. She, just because she's my friend, I'm not going to message her saying, hey, let's game. <laughs> no, that's not fair on her. You know, yeah. me and her are good friends. The fact that she communicates with me, she, she'll she drop me a message, and I can catch up with her, that just means the world to me. And that's sometimes you have to understand that related relationships aren't based on the, Natasha going, like, oh, yeah, sugar's live now everyone go follow sugar no that's not what it is it's about making those true networks and you, it's just so important i feel like people really need to understand the difference just because you're friends with someone that's really big doesn't mean that should they should leverage uh their community to you yeah yeah what they've yeah no 100 percent. yeah what they've built they you know they they, yeah they it's their hard to, work they, it's they, their they hard work. that they don't you know they don't have to give it to someone just because you're yeah friends. yeah yeah, no. I think it happens a lot within like the smaller communities, especially when you're affiliate, because there'll be a lot of people that'll be like, follow for follow. Um, yeah, yeah, you, you watch me, I watch time. you. Yeah. And then if I come to your chat, you got to give me a shout out. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I, I got, yeah. don't get me wrong. I got stuck in that bubble. Like at one point when I was like trying to get affiliate and I needed like four followers, I went to this person's stream and they're like, everyone go follow Sugar Rush. And I was like, what why like what's happening and then they were like okay sugar you have to follow everyone now as well and i was like oh okay <laughs> so i did it at that point because i was just like oh my god okay cool and then after that this just came to my stream all the time they're like you have to give us a shout out because we give you a shout out so you have to give us a yeah. shout out and i was like yeah. oh don't, don't yeah don't do something for someone because you want something back do it because yeah. you want to do it yeah yeah, no, I agree. I agree. <laughs> then I was just like, you guys can unfollow me. I don't want the followers. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, no, I remember when I 
started streaming or, or tried tried to <laughs> um i joined like loads of the like facebook groups and stuff like supports you know small streamers and whatnot because you don't know okay. essentially when you're a new streamer you just think that's what you need yeah yeah and all i saw on there was like follow for follow and do this i'm just like hey, i'm leaving this group i'm not i'm not staying here it's like i can't yeah exactly like, if, if i'm not gonna watch you then i'm not gonna follow you so it's just mm-hmm. yeah yeah no, i agree um what so the same question related to education what advice would you give to someone who's going to say start going to college or thinking about going to university what would you um what would you say to i them? think the one thing i'd say is alongside your study make sure you make the most of your extra curriculum time i think it's a bit more difficult when you're a content creator mm. and you're studying uh, because all your free time will go into content creation and that is completely fine but do you find that time to still network with people because there's so many like employability fairs there's so many different networks we can meet the management of the universities and management of other like uh, firms and all of that do that and make yourself presentable and have a backup plan university if, especially if content creation is your goal have a backup plan because if content creation doesn't work out then you know what's your backup plan what's happening because not everyone is essentially going to be as big as let's say pokemon and valkyrie Mm -hmm. not an xqc you know it's a lot of hard work for that one person to get that high up and as unfortunate as it is it's a hierarchy and not everyone is going to fit into that hierarchy so what's the backup plan for you that when you're going into education how are you making sure that you're so skilled that it comes to a point where you're like you know what content creation isn't for me i don't want to do it where are you going mm-hmm. who are you going to talk to what are you doing that's what you need whilst at university don't worry about what you're studying like i studied sociology don't know why i study sociology i'll be honest most most time i just studied it because i knew i loved writing essays and i just love learning more about like racism education gender and all of the like what's happened in the past and what's happening now but i made sure i networked in university because i knew at the end of the day i wanted to get into consultancy and that's what i networked myself into so i had a back like i always had a plan to go into it but it took a while like i didn't expect it to take me an hour uh, like a year and a half to get into my dream job but until then i was doing content creation so it's fine like i survived I think that's what you need to do. Just when you go to university, don't lock yourself up from opportunities. There's so many opportunities around. Like I learned coding in the university. Didn't need to, but there was a free like workshop for like eight weeks. And I was just like, oh, every Wednesday. Sure, I'll go to it. And I know how to make a website now. <laughs> Completely pointless skill, I feel like, because I don't use it. But, you know, I these are the things that you can pick up and you can learn. Like right now I'm learning how to uh, UX design at work because I'm like, oh yeah, sure. Why not? Why I was not? like, if it comes yeah. to a point where I have to make my own website, hey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, amazing. Yeah, no, yeah. That's, that's, a great, that's a great mindset to have. You know, it's like you, 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 you might not think you might need, you won't need this skill in the future. Yeah. But hey, who knows? You might, you might need it at some point. You might be able to help someone. Exactly. Point. Like, yeah. at, like for example, like I use so many skills from my content creation at my workplace. Like, I learned how to edit videos for, like, obviously for like YouTube and TikTok and all of that. And I learned how to, uh, I learned like social media a lot more. So now at work, uh, instead of them going out and paying someone like five k to edit videos, because vi- editing videos is really difficult, and sometimes they only need like something small um covered but they still pay the full range so if they approach a videographer they'll literally be like can you edit this for us okay it's a thousand cool do it but now i've come in the place and i'm like hey Mm -hmm. i can do it like it'll literally take me what (laughs) half an hour and i'll do it it's like a basic edit what they want and they're like wow you saved us so much money thank you and i'm like you're welcome (laughs) you know it's about how how you can use skills in different places (laughs) exactly i'll just like i'll, I'll see that bonus yeah just, wink wink <laughs> just pay me <laughs> yeah and it's oh, yeah. it's the same for like my carnage clan role i feel like my actual job helps there so i'm using skills from different places mm. and i'm practicing them to become better at where i am working and i think uh that's what it is just use the skills from everywhere you work 
and you'll enjoy it a lot more. You have to be so excited. The annoying thing is you have to be in a very good mental space to be so so excited about everything you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, you need to work on yourself first. You need to yeah. find out what works for you. How are you going to make sure you're in a good place? Uh, are you self-aware of your own emotions? All of that. And for that, I would honestly say, even if you feel like you don't need therapy, take therapy. <laughs> like yeah. it, it just helps you be, become so much knowledgeable in yourself and you you will refrain from like for example um indirectly tweeting i hate when people do that online because i'm just there like uh, you know you're in a community where people just indirectly tweet about each other or they'll tweet and just cause drama and i'm just like i'm in high school it's what it feels like and i was just like there's no like because you're your own boss you don't you don't essentially see of what sort of opportunities you may be limiting yourself from yeah. because a lot of the big streamers have already what they want. They're making the money from the sponsors. They're doing what they need to. But a lot of the small streamers, if you're being horrible online, maybe a brand will see that and be like, mm, I remember this person was quite disgusting and, you know, they said a few things and they were quite argumentative and they uh, they exposed this online. Do I want to partner with them? Yeah. you got to be careful about your own brand. It's so important. Yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine the title of this is, <laughs> Take therapy, everyone. Take like, therapy. damn, what was discussed? <laughs> Take therapy, stay in education. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, brilliant, brilliant. 